nice comfortable win for Manchester United. 3-0 against Brighton, much better than the 3-2 performance that we did win four days ago in the league. Um, the first half, uh, it wasn't exhilarating by any stretch of the imagination, but it was solid. Uh, we didn't really concede any sloppy errors or anything like that. We didn't give uh, Brighton many chances. We didn't forge many chances for ourselves, but a little bit of brilliance from Juan Mata delivering a wonderful free kick for uh, Scott McTominay to head that in to the, uh, the bottom right-hand corner. Really, really nice goal. Um, other than that, there wasn't too many talking points. Igalo had a little bit of a chance earlier in the half. Uh, I think it was Mata who set him up, actually, and uh, he took it around the keeper but hit the side netting, unfortunately. And then in the second half, Brighton did start a little bit stronger, but again, um, they didn't cause too many issues, really. Uh, I thought defensively we were very, very solid, and definitely three players are seriously pushing for contention in the start next eye. Dean Henderson... Eric Bailly and Donny van der Beek. They were all phenomenal today and take nothing away from Juan Mata who also was incredible today. To be honest, I'd probably give him man of the match. It's just in the current uh, way we play, the current style of football, his lack of pace really costs him in the wing areas. Um, we've got so much um, uh, competition in the midfield areas that it's really hard for him to get a starting place in the XI. But I do think this game solidifies him as our best backup option, certainly. And uh, seeing that he doesn't have a lot of pace, in fairness, he did burn, funnily enough, was it Bun? Burn? Whatever the, whatever the, the Brighton player was, but he burned him for pace um, and won a free kick in the second half. But yeah, I mean, usually Mata is obviously uh, lacking in the pace department, which is probably why... You know, give it. He's an intelligent football uh, footballer, but yeah, I, I don't think he warrants a start in the start next eye. But he was man of the match. But the other three, uh, definitely. Uh, Dean Henderson is really, really fifty-fifty with De Gea at the minute. In fairness to De Gea, he hasn't put a foot wrong this season so far, other than a sloppy pass. But thankfully, that didn't result in a goal. Um, saving, you know, he's been on point, so that's going to be a really interesting battle. Eric Bailly, I think, has done enough to partner Maguire against Spurs. He got 90 minutes in the tank today, no injury, played phenomenally well, and uh, yeah, I think, like I said in the last uh, review, it's either Lindelof or Maguire. Maguire's our best centre back. I still stand by that, um, but I mean, they play similar roles. You can't have both of them. Um, because by other than uh, Ted and Mengi, there's no one else with the kind of pace that he has to, to cover the defence when it's one on one or you know when you need a, a defender to sprint back. There's no one else who can do that other than p potentially Mengi uh, in our centre back department, and it doesn't look as though we're going to sign one. But anyway, second half continued. Um, Brighton had their best chance of the game in this second half. It was a ball played into Trossard, and what a save from Dean Henderson to. Uh, Keep the score 1-0. And if that goal had went in, it's a different outlook. You know, maybe we, we play a little bit more nervy. Um, we don't make the subs that we do. Uh, well, then again, we made Pogba and Rashford. So we probably would make the subs that we did. But I don't know. It, it just would have been a far more nervy game. And we wouldn't have looked half as comfortable. So, yeah, wonderful save from Henderson. And then shortly after, we managed to get the second goal. It's lovely play. As I say, Pogba and Rashford got um, brought on and it instantly changed how fast uh, we looked in the in the attack. Um, James and Igalo didn't really do much today. I was hoping Dan James would have a good performance. Um, I know Igalo hit the side netting, but yeah, more and more he is looking like a Chinese 31-year-old striker from, sorry, not Chinese, from the Chinese league. Um, and it, 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 it's sad to see because prior to lockdown, he was a phenomenon. And I mean, it's still worthwhile that we brought him in on loan. Um, he, he made an instant impact and did help us uh, reach the semi-finals of both the FA Cup and the Europa League. Um, but anyhow, they got subbed off and we looked a lot better going forward. And uh, it's brilliant work from... Uh, who passed it in to Van der Beek? I'm not entirely sure. Can't remember. It might have been McTominay. Whoever it was, um, passed it in to Van der Beek. And uh, it's a lovely back heel through to Juan Mata, who just, again, shows his intelligence there. He allows the defender, I think it was Dunk, to kind of block his shot, but also block the keeper's view. 
a matter slots it under his legs and the keeper can't see anything so it slots past him um, and it's just a wonderful finish 2-0 Mata deserved his goal today and he got an assist for the first one so yeah my man of the match definitely and then shortly after that goal went in we had a free kick um, and Pogba stepped up and this is just wonderful I know it takes a slight deflection but in off the post just beautiful beautiful free kick and uh, I've got to say Pogba despite the goal looked like Pogba like the last two day uh, two days two games that he's played against Palace and Brighton he's just looked a bit off like his first touch was off his confidence wasn't there you know where he holds off the ball and he's got all that strength and then his, his vision he's just he, he always looks like a step ahead of everyone else well in this game it looked like Pogba again uh, he had that strength back he had that vision back and he had that that confidence back really and that was even before he scored so that's nice to see uh, hopefully he continues that in the game against Spurs uh, on Sunday I think one day before the transfer window closes I ain't even going to talk about the rumours for the transfer window because I mean we apparently bid for about 28 players yesterday so you know um, when when that's done thank god it's done regardless of what happens of course I want us to sign players I really do at least two but uh, oh, it's just getting really annoying I can't wait for the window to end and hopefully we can get our players but anyhow enough of that shit is a great performance and let's take this on to the game against Spurs really really important we need to get those three points definitely Son's injured of course um, other than that I don't think they've got any other major players out thus far that I know of in terms of the cup uh, the cup draws tomorrow and currently I think um, Man City Everton Newcastle and uh, Spurs as well as us are through and I think the other games I might be missing one but the other games Brentford versus Fulham and Liverpool versus Arsenal so it's looking like a really strong uh, quarter-final draw that we potentially could have and Calvert-Lewin's on fire for Everton six goals in two games two back-to-back hat-tricks madness Carlo Ancelotti is doing wonderful things with that team so they're obviously the dark horse in the Premier League this season it looks like early days of course but they made some good signings and they do look strong anyhow brilliant from United and let's keep this going and uh, yeah right before the the international break let's have six points in the Premier League <laughs> 